We love Spider-Man for his skills and heroic attributes, but most of all, we love that brain of his. One of the coolest things Peter Parker invented were the web shooters he uses to fight crime. But did you know that there are many secrets behind them? Like he can shoot different consistencies? Before we dive into Spidey's gadgets, swing on over to our subscribe button to join the CBR notification squad and keep up to date with all our videos. He invented them. Before the bite of a radioactive spider granted him superhuman abilities, Peter Parker seriously lacked any sort of athletic coordination, social skills, and game with the ladies. Are you busy Friday night? <laughs> cool. Uh, can you take pictures of my boyfriend's car? I just, you know, I really want to frame a good one for his birthday. What Peter never lacked was super genius level intelligence. Nothing demonstrates this better than the fact he invented the web shooters all on his own. Originally, they were built to help Peter succeed in a wrestling challenge, a decision that would lead to the most fateful event of the young teenager's life, Uncle Ben's death and the choice to fight crime as Spider-Man. The classic design can be strapped to Peter's wrists beneath the sleeve of his costume and also include a trigger on each palm. When Peter taps those triggers, the web fluid stored in small cartridges passes through an internal spinner which cuts the fluid into strands before it shoots out from an adjustable nozzle. Traditionally, Spider-Man usually utilizes a form of mechanical web shooters for his crime-fighting needs. In Sony's The Amazing Spider-Man and its sequel, Peter Parker, played by Andrew Garfield, invented the web shooter with an assist from Oscorp. Meanwhile, other Spider-People in the comics, like Miles Morales and Spider-Gwen, receive them as gifts. Dynamic Webbing Believe it or not, the web shooters are a little more refined than they look, so that he doesn't accidentally shoot off a line of webbing every time he makes a fist or throws a punch, Spider-Man designed the web shooters to only fire when he quickly double taps the palm triggers. Pretty clever, right? Not only that, but if Peter should require an alternate type of webbing or web rope, all he has to do is alternate how he taps the trigger. Now that is very cool. How would he do something like that, you may ask? A fast second tap will simply fire a slender strand, ideal for web slinging, while a longer second tap adds to the strand's thickness. If Peter wants a glue-like paste to stop baddies in their tracks, a prolonged press to his palm will do the trick. Did Pete think of everything? The NYPD must appreciate how Spider-Man constantly webs up and leaves safely immobilized criminals for officers to pick up. Luckily for them, it's just a matter of Peter briskly hitting the trigger to shoot multiple strands that bind prospective foes. Or maybe the NYPD officers have often found themselves getting stuck in the sticky web themselves. Either way, his resourcefulness and cleverness proved to be pretty darn useful. Hey, my name is Spider-Man. You can call me Webhead. You can call me Amazing. Just don't call me late for dinner, you get it? Web fluid is made of... Well, to be quite honest, no one really knows. What? How is that possible? Uh... That's a question. There's no official statement by any of the creatives behind the various Spider-Man titles regarding their chemical composition. There has to be some sort of mention in all the years Spider-Man has been around, right? Spider-Man The Ultimate Guide states that Peter spent countless hours in his high school laboratory working with multi-polymer compounds and eventually created an adhesive substance that becomes web fluid. Some of the details vary, but generally the web fluid exists in a semi-solid state while in the cartridge, and it's up to the aforementioned spinneret mechanism in the web shooters to chop the stuff up into web roped strands. That's definitely some fancy technology Peter created. Depending on its consistency when fired, the web fluid itself is incredibly strong. According again to the ultimate guide, each cartridge holds about a thousand yards of webbing. Once the web fluid is exposed to the open air, it begins to harden or dissolve. It all depends on what kind of web he shoots. It's also stated to be able to withstand temperatures of a thousand degrees Fahrenheit. So watch out, Human Torch. It looks like even you aren't immune either. Combat webbing. Peter has invented a variety of different types of webbing to help him out of most combat situations. Emphasis on the most part, web fluid wise, name it and Spider-Man's got it. Or can invent it at least. In Marvel's Strange Tales Annual number 2 from 1963, Spider-Man created a form of ice webbing to combat the fiery attacks of Johnny Storm. In a particularly horrifying demonstration of Peter's brilliance, he laced web fluid with hydrofluoric acid that melted the Sandman in his tracks. That was in The Amazing Spider-Man. Spider-Man 615. What's Spider-Man's excuse for such questionably excessive methods? Well, 
<laughs> to be fair, Spidey was in the thrones of fighting off a seemingly endless stream of returning villains during the Gauntlet arc. Our favorite webhead was probably just in survival mode, a web or be web sort of thing, you know. Recently, in Mark Webb's 2012 film The Amazing Spider-Man 2, Peter Parker used a type of webbing that could conduct electricity to combat Electro, played by Jamie Foxx. In the comics, Peter also has used flame and sonic webbing to deal with those pesky symbiotes like Venom and Carnage. Some of the crazier and niche web fluid formulas include magnetic webbing, lead-lined webbing, and something called microcoiled Z-metal. This is starting to sound like like a bad comic book plot. It gets worse. Sometimes it's organic. In the character's long, varied history, there have been a few occasions or interpretations that saw Spider-Man without the traditional homegrown mechanical web shooters. Famously, in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy, the web shooters were controversially replaced with an organic form of webbing that Peter Parker, played by Tommy McGuire, shot directly from his wrist like a kind of human spider silk. Raimi and the other creatives behind the film toyed with the idea of keeping the mechanical web shooters but ultimately decided to let their version of the wall crawler spin his own all-natural webs. We love this spin on Spidey, and watching Peter try to figure out those new changes in his body, as opposed to just creating shooters. Go web! Fly! Up, up, and away, web! The Spectacular Spider-Man number 15 through 16 storyline saw Peter infected by a kiss from the Queen, which literally turned him into a monstrous spider. This, in turn, led to Spider-Man having the ability to produce organic webbing for a time, coinciding with Raimi's use of organic webbing in the films. The alien symbiote costume Peter wore, that would eventually become Venom and spawn an endless stream of symbiote plotlines, also produced an infinite supply of organic webbing for anyone wearing the suit. Spider-Man will always have enemies. I can't let you take that risk. MJ had web shooters. Following the introduction of organic webbing to the comics, the I Heart Marvel continuity saw Peter Parker gift a pair of his old web shooters to Mary Jane as a Valentine's Day present. How sweet and thoughtful. Pete's main concern is always to protect those he loves, so this was all his idea, right? Not all the credit goes to Peter in this case, as Tony Stark had a hand in their modification. Ah, good old Tony Stark, always so in tune with the ladies. As walnut date loaves go, that wasn't bad. Mary Jane wears the disguised web shooters as bracelets, fabulous and functional. Speaking of normal people using web shooters, there have been more than a few instances of inspired civilians taking a crack at inventing a version of Spider-Man's famous gadget. A German lab technician created a pseudo web shooter out of a coil gun, which utilized electromagnetism to fire a harpoon instead of Spidey's signature web fluid. The struggle is real. Companies have been trying to commercialize spider silk for a while now, and we totally understand and why. It's almost unfathomably strong. Spider silk is five times as strong as steel, three times as strong as Kevlar, conducts heat and electricity, and is hyperallergenic and biodegradable. Some forms of silk are 300% elastic. Why don't we have this everywhere? This sounds like the best material ever. Taking a cue from Peter Parker, scientists just need a little luck and to put enough time in at the high school lab, and the obstacles in the way of manipulating and manufacturing spider silk will be overcome. It's that simple, right? Well, Pete's kind of a genius, so it makes it seem a bit easier than it is. Who knows, maybe conventional materials like steel will be completely replaced by spider silk. Especially when the end result's a bunch of New Yorkers commuting to work via web slinging. How cool would it be to swing to work? We just don't want a bunch of actual spiders crawling around. This sounds like the perfect job for Tesla. Or Tony Stark. He's a real person, right? Empty? Not now! The Running Lowdown Spider-Man carries dozens of web fluid cartridges between the web shooters themselves and the accompanying utility belt. He has installed a warning light to give him a heads up when the supply is low. Despite all of this, the web cartridge ammo still tends to run low. This creates a difficult situation for a superhero who depends upon the ability to constantly sling web rope in order to survive. Peter Parker has had issues with his patented web shooter technology since day one. In The Amazing Spider-Man number one, when Peter
Peter Spider-Sense finally hones in on the real chameleon, his web shooters come up empty. How much web fluid does Peter actually pack in those web shooters? The figures vary, but a good visual representation comes from the controversial One More Day storyline. Peter angrily unleashes all the webbing he has to stop Iron Man completely in his Stark Industries funded metal boots, and it works. Even the Sam Raimi films incorporated Spider-Man's long-standing low web fluid issue by making his organic webbing power suffer a form of impotency. <laughs> oh no, come on! In Spider-Man 2, as Peter starts to doubt his life choices, particularly his choice to be Spider-Man, instead of living a normal life with Mary Jane, his powers begin to disappear, leaving him unable to stick to walls, sense danger with his spider sense, and of course, sling web lines. I don't know what kind of mind game this is, but I'm the real Spider-Man. The real Peter Parker. Ben Riley improved Pete's design. Love it or hate it, no Spider-Man list has ever been written without some passing mention of the infamous Clone Saga. During that particular arc, Ben Riley, one of Peter Parker's clones, created by Professor Miles Warren, aka the Jackal, returned to New York and fought alongside Peter. Eventually, Peter and Ben took a test to determine once and for all who the original wall crawler was. To their surprise, and readers everywhere, Peter was determined to actually be the clone. All of you must hear the Scarlet Spider story, for this is his reality we're in. So, naturally, Peter gave up crime fighting, took up grunge music, and moved to Portland with Mary Jane, freeing up Ben Riley to become first the Scarlet Spider, and then Spider-Man. As Ben's quest as the new Spider-Man in town, he improved on many of Peter's designs and spared no expense on the web shooters. Not only did he awesomely wear those bad boys on the outside of his costume, but added the ability to fire stingers in the form of tiny web-based missiles. Ben also created impact webbing, which released tendrils upon impact and encased the target of choice in a cozy cocoon. The stingers in the impact webbing clearly served very specific and tactical functions, unlike the Scarlet Spider's blue sleeveless hoodie. Don't tell that me. Homecoming. The latest incarnation of the wall crawler certainly used mechanical web shooters to their fullest in Captain America Civil War. It has been since confirmed that Peter Parker will be sticking with the tried and true shooters for this year's upcoming Spider-Man Homecoming, although they appear to be a little bit more advanced than previous versions. Also, the new suit itself sports some rather interesting additions like a recon drone, GPS, and the long-awaited web wings. We know you've all been waiting for those web wings. According to director John Watts, Tony Stark may be the master mind behind these little flourishes, which is certainly in line and inspired by the more recent relationship Tony and Peter have shared in the comics over the last several years. Unfortunately, the style decision to feature the web shooters prominently on the outside of the costume is probably not a conscience referent to Ben Riley or the Scarlet Spider, but hey, who knows? The sequel to this new Spidey film might well be Spider-Man Homecoming 2, Clones, Clones, Clones! Attack of the Clones? Sony or Marvel is bound to get around to the Clones saga someday, especially if the current rate of superhero related releases keeps up. Give us more Spidey. Oh God. Hey buddy, I think you lost this. Which one of these web shooter secrets surprised you the most? Did we miss any? Let us know in the comments below. And while you're here, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.